Okay, great. Now, let me tell you one of the things that fascinates me the most about you. Tell me. Is the fact that the woman to whom you're married right now mm -hmm. is the girl that you were dating when we were in the university. Yes, sir. You don't even know how intriguing that is for me. <laughs> and I will explain. So, when university in 1999, mm -hmm. when Sheikh Body comes out. That's right. Tribesmen. Yes, sir. And you became to say you were superstars on campuses to say nothing because you were superstars all around the nation. Now, so I mean, there I was beefing. Really? Yeah, oh, Bill, I was old man. I was beefing. Look, I was I was beefing. I was hating because shortly before that, a couple of months before that, my movie Diamond Ring right. had come out, and I was a star, and I was doing the star thing. Right. And then you guys come out with Shake Body, and as look, as has always been in the world, the rock star is always gonna edge the actor. It doesn't matter. Music is always gonna edge. I mean, there's something about music, you know. So, you guys, I mean, they're shaking body and all of that. So, we're having for now. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm thinking I remember what I did with my celebrity on campus. I proceeded to sleep with whoever would have me. No, no, I won't even, I won't even lie. <laughs> as far as I was concerned, that's the only reason I went to Unilag. <laughs> you know, oh I was gonna do that, yeah. and, and I did that, you know. So, the thought that the girl that I was dating then will now be so patient, disciplined, and stuck with me all through the years and now be my wife. I, I just don't understand. So it's one of two things. You either were nowhere close to as bad as I was, which I doubt you had to be. I was you, bad. I, you had, I mean, the celebrity was definitely, too much. Uh, yeah, definitely was bad. Yeah, thank God you said that. <laughs> or is that Dolly was just so invested in you. She was the angel that was invested in you and just, you were like, you know what? I'm just, you know, so this is my guy. I mean, like everybody else that went to college, you know, jump by trash, you do all of that. You're chasing girls. Um, I guess I must have had somewhat of an overload between year one and year two because like you, I didn't, well, I'm, and I'm sure, but like you, especially, I didn't have to go chase the girls. They just came to me. And I think we weren't even that big at the time. I think it was just, there was just something about the fact that I was different. I'd come from the North. I spoke a little different. There oh, were just yeah. certain things about me, I guess, that was attractive. Oh yeah. You know, too. So by the time I got to year two, I was kind of, I was getting tired. You were jaded. I was to sue me. <laughs> so just like, you know what? And so she came in in year three is when I met her. And even at the time I met her, you know, still dabbling here and there. Uh, but when we met, there was just something about her that just really connected with me in my soul. So it wasn't that at the time I thought that, oh, this is the most beautiful woman in the world I've ever seen, or this is the, you know what I mean, best. It was, there was just something. And you know, there's a connection that you make with someone that is hard to really explain how it happens, but something just keeps pulling you back to that person. Cause there, there actually was a time when we broke up for about a year. Okay. Early on, I think it was in 2005, you know, somewhere around there. And that time I was here in the US and she was, you know, still in Nigeria, a little bit of communication issues and whatnot. So we went our separate ways. And when we reconnected, there was just something in the back of my mind that was telling me, this is your wife, fool. Forget all these Atlanta girls. This is your <laughs> wife. And it's probably the best decision I've ever made in my life because everything that has happened to me since has been directly connected to the fact that I chose Dolly. Every single thing. Wow. Tribesmen, tech, the startups, the fund, seed fund raising, the big raises, real estate, and everything else that I'm doing right now, I can directly tie to the fact that I made that choice. So I count myself lucky. When you say that she's directly tied to everything that has happened yeah. to you, mm -hmm. uh, this is how I mean to ask this question now. Um, what is one of Africa's best musical talents and biggest producers doing in the United States of America? And I don't ask this or say this easily. There are people who do music and they do it well. And you know, okay, he does it well. In fact, maybe very well, perhaps because of a number of factors that could be this or that. But there are some people for whom we say it is. It's the Yoruba word. A B -B. Hmm. Your music itself, if, if anybody could refer to himself as Mr. Music, you'd be that guy. You'd be the one guy that can walk into a studio and do everything. You'd come and be behind the mic and sing the song. You go behind the cursor and the, and the boards and everything and you produce. You're that guy. Your music. 
So what, what is one of Africa's biggest doing in the United States? First of all, thank you for being so kind. Um, it's weird when I hear people talk about me like that. And I think about it and I'm like, hmm, really? Yeah. So you are, okay. <laughs> but to answer your, to answer your question, <laughs> um, I needed to make very difficult decisions um, that had to do with the trajectory of my life, what I wanted for my children, and essentially the journey and the path that I needed to be on for me to get the satisfaction that I wanted. And I think it's, it's difficult for people to see because from the outside, what you see is, ah, you know, this guy's doing well, he's successful, he's doing all these things, so why would he leave? A lot of people ask me the same question. Some say, oh, why'd you leave somewhat at the peak? Because I had just moved back to Nigeria, I had invested a couple hundred thousand dollars buying equipment, you know, setting up studios and doing all of that, signing artists and, and everything. And in 2011, I think it was like Christmas of 2011, I just made the decision and said, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore because it wasn't giving me fulfillment anymore. When we were in university, yeah.